porcelain collection of the museum comes from France, Germany, UK and Italy. The Serves Porcelain Collection of France and the Dresden Porcelain Collection of Germany constitutes a unique place in the museum's collection. Porcelain can be broadly divided into two categories, namely hard paste porcelain and soft paste porcelain. The Salar Jung Museum possesses a good number of unprecedented Dresden porcelain pieces which were identified based on factory marks imprinted below each article. The English porcelain collection of the museum is of assorted types mostly produced during the 19th century. The exceptional pieces are cups, saucers, plates, figurines etc. Sev porcelain is a symbol of immense power, money and privilege. They cost the equivalent of millions of pounds and represented the pinnacle of human ingenuity. They are fantasies about a material and that's the key thing. You look at it, you look at its skill. One man sculpts the elephant's head, another one then paints his eyes, another one gilds the hairs in his ears. And he's a lovely, happy, friendly elephant. He's a bolshy, bad-tempered, difficult elephant. You don't want to meet him on the road to Mandalay. Just look at the eyes, the colouring, the shaping. It's magic. Everything is so original and no two things. With the presence of Jesuit missionaries to China from the late 16th century, and sea trades with corporations such as the powerful Dutch East India Company, increasing amounts of Chinese porcelain was exported to the West, where it was consumed by the aristocracy and other elites in increase. The manufacture of European porcelain differed from the Chinese by its relatively high proportion of kaolin, about 50% against the Chinese 30%. They were experimenting and it would be very wrong to imagine they were very scientific about what they were doing at all. Really, all that they knew was that in order to reproduce porcelain, they had to fire the body at a very high temperature. <music>